Here is Johnny Bench. Would you believe that? Well, this, this guy's in another world. I mean, he's unbelievable. Watch this play by Brooks Robinson. He says he goes to his left better. You'd have to believe him, although he's made two great plays to his right. Look at that. The outstanding reflexes are what make a third baseman, and he has them. Always to be remembered play by Brooks Robinson. The 1970 World Series has been a baseball ballet at third base. NBC Sports presents Game 4 of the 1970 World Series. The National League champs, the Cincinnati Reds, versus the American League champions, the Baltimore Orioles. Overcast in Baltimore this afternoon. A 20% chance of rain. The temperature again in the 60s. Hello, everybody. I'm Kurt Gowdy of NBC Sports. This is Chuck Thompson, the voice of the Baltimore Orioles. And roaming the stands again with celebrities and the famous people of baseball will be Tony Kubek. And there is a chance that the President of the United States will be here at Game 4 of the World Series. We understand that he may be arriving later in the game. And, of course, when he does, we'll all know about it. Well, the Cincinnati Reds are fighting a long-standing precedent in baseball. No team has ever lost the first two games of the series in their home ballpark. No team has ever lost the first three games of the series and gone on to win. The Reds haven't been shamed. They're a great ball club. They played well here. They've hit the ball hard, but right at somebody. they made good plays. Their bullpen has been disappointing in the series. But overall, they put on a fine display. They have run, though, into a red-hot ball club that can do no wrong. Baltimore with an amazing winning streak now of 17 successive victories. 11 last regular games, three in the playoffs, and three more in the World Series. When will that string end? Could end today. We'll find out. If it doesn't, the Orioles are the champs of the world in baseball. Now to tell you about today's starting pitchers and a bit more, here's the fine voice of the Baltimore Orioles, Mr. Chuck Thompson. Thank you, Kurt Gotti. Good afternoon, everybody. Well, it's a rematch of game one, and that brings together Gary Nolan, the right-hander for the Cincinnati Reds, and the other right-hander for the Baltimore Orioles, Jim Palmer. Palmer, on the left-hand side of your screen, was the winner in game number one over Gary Nolan. And Nolan coming back today in only his second World Series start, pitched rather well in six and two-third innings against Palmer in the opening day, had his strikeout pitch going, but was bothered by the home run ball. He threw three home runs in the opening game of the 70 series. It is something he hopes that is history and will not be repeated. So it'll be Jim Palmer, 1-0, and, and Gary Nolan, 0-1, oh in game number four of the 1970 World Series here at Baltimore's Memorial Stadium. On the field before game four, famed sports artist Leroy Neiman puts his brush to work with on-the-spot live sketches of the athletes. Meanwhile, the big red machine is on the edge of disaster, and Johnny Bench can't get Brooks Robinson out of his mind. Brooks just made some plays that I didn't think were quite possible by anybody else. And, of course, I heard a lot of things about Brooks. And he just had so fantastic reflexes that uh, he was able to dive for the ball. Actually, the ball looked like it was by him, and he dove for the ball and came up with it. Casey Stengel does the pregame honors, flanked by American League President Joe Cronin, Commissioner Bowie Kuhn, Cardinal Sheehan, and Baltimore's head man, Jerry Hochberger and once more for the West Coast. Look at this wind up. <laughs> L.A. Hendricks, the Baltimore catcher, received the pitches. So officially the first ball has been thrown out and here are the Orioles coming on the field, trying to wrap it up today. They get a hand from the hometown fans. We'll set Baltimore up defensively for you. Same lineup, except for the catcher yesterday. At first base, John Powell. Second base, Dave Johnson. Shortstop, Mark Belanger. Brooks Robinson at third. A great infield. In left field, Don Buford. Center fielder, Paul Blair. Right fielder, Frank Robinson. 
The catcher is Ellie Hendricks. And the winner of game one, who wasn't too sharp that day but still won, Jim Palmer, coming back this afternoon. And now to take over and give you the play-by-play -play action for the first four and a half inning, the voice of the Baltimore Orioles, Chuck Thompson. Thank you very much, Kurt Gotti, and again, good afternoon. And uh, we seem to have, weather-wise, exactly what Kurt and I were telling you about yesterday. A very bad morning that is uh, pleasantly trying to turn into a pleasant afternoon, as we can see blue skies overhead. Uh, the little bit of a breeze that is apparent here at Memorial Stadium is uh, uh, drifting gently towards center field. And we'll have a brief uh, delay as center fielder Paul Blair has elected uh, to come on and pick up some sunglasses from the Baltimore bat boy Jay Mazzone and the umpiring alignment, as you see. The American League's Bob Stewart at the plate from the National League Bill Williams at first, from the American League Emmett Ashford second, from the National League Ken Burke Hart at third, and on the left field foul line from the American League Red Flaherty, John Red Flaherty, and on the right field line from the National League Tony Benson. Jim Palmer has been runner-up in the ERA in the American League in each of his last two seasons with a 234 in 1969 and 271 in 1970. Ran behind Diego Segui on 256. And his one and loss percentage of 670 is the very best among the active American League pitchers. And now here is Bobby Tolan. This is a switch, as Kurt mentioned, in the uh, Cincinnati Reds batting order. Tolan, batting in the number two spot through the first uh, three games, is now leading off. And here we go in game four. Base hit. For Tolan, that will be his fourth World Series hit. Now Pete Rose, batting in the number two spot, has two base hits and 11 trips this season. That base hit by Tolan, opening up the fourth game, now gives him an eight-game hitting streak. Out of play, strike one to Pete Rose. Palmer is one of the Oriole pitchers who has been much more effective at home than on the road in the last few years. Tolan is running. No play at second. It'll be first base. One down. Pete Rose is gone on the ground ball to Johnson. Tolan now at second with one out. And here comes Tony Perez. Kurt? Chuck, it looks like the Reds might play a gambling game today, trying to open anything up for themselves. That's the position they're in. They've got to take every possible chance and uh, play a wide-open offensive game, a, a daring uh, brand of baseball, because, well, they just have to win today. So Tolan is now at second with one out. And here is Perez, and it has been a disappointing series for Perez so far. That's the problem with Perez. And the count now is the ball and two strikes. That's the Palmer curve again. And for Palmer, his first strikeout, he is now three balls and no strikes to Johnny Bench with two out and Tolan at second. Well, let's see if it's in or out of play. Boo Powell. Yes, sir. That is a catch. It is a catch. Was finally Boog Powell's turn to turn in a good play in the infield. This foul ball, a double chance at it. The big fella on top of the dugout pops out of his glove up in the air quickly with a bare hand. Baltimore's made five errors. Cincinnati hasn't made an error in this series, but Baltimore's been the top fielding team. Jim Palmer goes for the sweep. And Bench lifts a foul pop that seems out of play. Now look at 250 pounds of agility. The play by Powell closes out the Reds first. Well, quickly a look at the Red defender, first base Lee May, and at second base Tommy Helm, Concepcion the shortstop, and Perez the third baseman. The left fielder is Carbo, and the center fielder Tolan, and the right fielder is Pete Rose. Catching, it's Johnny Bench, and on the mound, Gary Nolan. 3-2 to Buford, and he's on to the wall. Buford reaches with a base on balls, and now here is the man who has uh, just suddenly come to life after a very dismal uh, three-game playoff series against the Minnesota Twins when he managed to scratch out but one base hit. He has come on uh, 
in the World Series against Cincinnati to show six hits in 12 trips to the plate, including a double and two runs batted in. Now, Lee May will hold with a base runner, Buford, at first base. Fine, fine play from Tony Perez retires with sacrificing Paul Blair, but that was an outstanding play from Perez. You have but one option on a bunt as good as that one, and that is to make the pickup with the bare hand and the throw. A fine sacrifice by Blair and a good play from third baseman Perez. One out, and now Boo Powell and Cincinnati Pollard Powell yesterday for the first time in the series. Powell leads the series in home runs. He has two. He has four runs batted in, three hits and nine trips, and a 3-3-3 batting average. And they now have the Powell shift in effect with three infielders between first and second in that the base runner Buford has reached second. One-two pitch. Fine play by May. He's going to the bag. The unassisted put out. Down to third base goes Buford on the play. A good play from first baseman Lee May to retire. May's had an excellent World Series. He's fielded very steadily at first, made a couple of good plays. He's had four hits, four RBIs, and he's been robbed twice by Brooks Robinson. I think overall he's probably been the top all-around player for the Reds so far in the series. Unquestionably he has, and here is a man who is hoping to make a late showing for Baltimore. Through the first two in Cincinnati, uh, Frank Robinson went 0 for 9. Yesterday, he picked up three base hits, including a big home run by big distance-wise, about 430 feet to center field. There are two out with Buford, and there is the number one Oriole in the 70 series, Brooks Robinson. But now let's watch Frank. Good breaking ball. Another good breaking pitch from Gary Nolan, 0 and 2. He's out. Strike three calls. And that'll be it for the Orioles. So at the end of the first inning, the score is Baltimore nothing and Cincinnati nothing. The very capable coaches for the Cincinnati Reds at third base, Alex Gramis, and at first base, uh, one of the big men. What a hitter he was in his time, Ted Kluszewski. Now here is Lee May. As Kurt pointed out a moment ago, unquestionably, he is the stickout for the Cincinnati Reds in their desperate battle against Baltimore here in the 70 series. Kurt, ball four. And Palmer uh, did not appreciate the call. He jumped a little bit off the mound, didn't he? And here's the story on Palmer in 1970. For the first time in his career, a 20-game winner. And his lifetime stats are there also. And uh, the story on his efforts in the 1970 World Series. Kurt? He had trouble getting to that 20 mark, didn't he, in oh, September? He, did. he really did. It got to be quite a thing. I think his fourth shot at it, he finally made it, Kurt. But it looked like he was just not going to be a 20-game winner this year. Here is Carbo. Out of play. Palmer curve gets Carbo. Strikeout number two. One out of the inning. And now the very steady and very capable Cincinnati second baseman, Tommy Helms. And that's a, an example of a Palmer curveball again. Uh, the effort that uh, Weaver referred to was the McNally's effort against Minnesota, not in the World Series game yesterday. But he did refer to Palmer's opening game effort against Cincinnati at the beautiful Riverfront Stadium. Here is Dave Concepcion hitting 333. Started yesterday's game, had one hit and three trips, and he hit the ball right on the nose every trip to the plate. Got a couple of runs batted in. And the Orioles play him to go the other way. Ball one. By that I mean they play the right-handed hitter to hit the ball to right field. As you see Blair toward the alley in right center. Frank is fairly straight away, maybe favoring the foul line of right field. And he's hit it sharply again, has Concepcion. And this one is going all the way to the wall. And Lee May is headed for third. May is going to score the throw to third. Concepcion has tripled to give Cincinnati a one to nothing lead. But in a second, Venezuela's newest shortstop find, Dave Concepcion, splits right center with a triple, bringing in Lee May. 
with the Red Sea time running out in 1970, they also see a star rising at short. He handles that bat to right field. As Chuck said, he hit it right on the nose yesterday to right. They put him in there to get more punch in the lineup. He out hit Woody Woodward about 40 points during the season. An example of how sharply the ball had to be hit. Not very often will you see that type of a drive get by Paul Blair, the Orioles center fielder. Now here is Gary Nolan, Dave Johnson waiting, and the play to first for the final out. But Cincinnati has a run and a hit. And uh, at the middle of the second inning, the score is Cincinnati 1, Baltimore nothing. Number five. Watch the left fielder. Hold on. Brooks Robertson, not a big home run hitter, but he'll hit 18, 20, 25 during a normal year. Second time starter Gary Nolan delivers to Brooks Robinson. And boom, it's a one-to-one -one ball game. The lamp black under Robinson's eyes seemed to drip with emotion. is his third lifetime series home run and here is Hendrick second base from Helm one gone the on deck hitter for Baltimore Mark Belan Nolan to May and two down Well, the center fielder, Tolan, should make the play and does. A run on a base hit, and so at the end of the second inning, the score is Baltimore 1 and Cincinnati 1. In the Cincinnati half of the third inning, it'll be Bobby Tolan, Pete Rose, and Tony Perez in that order. Tolan opened the game for the Reds with a single loop right field. It's fourth hit of the series. Ball one to Bobby. Ball two. Ball three. Fowler gives up another walk. His second, as opposed to three strikeouts. We haven't seen too much base stealing in this series. We may see something now, though. The boy at first, Bobby Tolan, led the majors in stolen bases. It's a tie game, third inning. And now here is Pete Rose, who uh, bounced to the second baseman in the first inning, but Tolan was running on the pitch, and he reached second. Paul Blair going to try to cut it off, and he's there. Tolan will go to third. And the Reds have him on the corners with nobody out. In the Cincinnati third after Tolan walks, Rose weighs in with a single to right center. Nobody out. Runners first and third. And here is Perez. Struck out on the first inning. The Palmer fastball. Four strikeouts for Palmer. And there's no let up. As here is Johnny Bench. Fouled out to Boog Powell in the first inning, and uh, Powell made a, a juggling. Interesting catch. Well, Belanger, the shortstop, watched Tolan at third. Here's Belanger. And he starts home, and Belanger's throw stops him. Two down. Top of the third. 
One one tie and here is Lee May. The Landry can't do a thing with it. He knocked it down but the run scores and Cincinnati leads two to one. An infield hit for May. That gives May five RBI at the time of Brooks Robinson. Talking to Ralph Hout last night, the Yankee manager, he says Belanger has the greatest range in the American League. He gets the balls, no other shortstop does, and that was a good example. Mark Belanger makes a lunging grab. There's no play, and Bobby Tolan scores. The Reds lead two to one. Brooks Robinson going to third for the force that ends the inning. And so at the middle of the third inning, the score is now Cincinnati 2, Baltimore 1. Another good look in from uh, the center field area here at Memorial Stadium in Baltimore, where 51,700 plus saw the third game here yesterday afternoon. And it looks as though they have the same crowd uh, uh, this afternoon. And Jim Palmer to lead off. Palmer has been to the plate twice in this. I'll check that four times in the series without a base. Now searching for the Orioles, number 22, Jim Palmer. Center fielder Tolan cannot get there. So pitcher Jim Palmer has Baltimore's second hit. Number nine. We'll have Don to and now Don Buford, he walked in the first inning. Lee May. He's got Buford. <laughs> no sacrifice, but down to second base goes Palmer. Buford retired unassisted by first baseman Lee May. And now Paul Blair, sacrificed in the Number first six. inning. Paul Blair. Strikeout for Gary Nolan. That'll be two in the strikeout column. We've got a looking third by Frank Robinson and the swinging strike to Blair. And here's Boog Powell. Number 26, Boog Powell. Ball four to Powell. And that brings out Frank Robinson. And a little disappointed Gary Nolan. Frank was called out on strikes in the first inning. Cincinnati, two runs, four hits, and no errors. Baltimore, one run, two hits, and no errors. Against Frank Robinson, shortstop Concepcion is maybe three steps back on the outfield grass. Base hit. Palmer around third coming home. Throw. Tie game. But it's the bird's turn to strike back. Palmer's on second, Powell at first, Frank Robinson. On the hit, Palmer is waved around by on deck Brooks Robinson. The throw is off the mark, and it's all tied up. Brooks Robinson comes up. Brooks Robinson comes up. And this hit has the umpire jumping. Watch it, Emmett. Powell rounds third as Tolan fumbled, and the runners move up. Baltimore leads 3-2. And here comes uh, Sparky Anderson. And if we read the gesture correctly, that means the left-hander is wanted from the bullpen, and the left-hander is Don Gullett. 
Brooks Robinson now has six base hits in the series and six runs batted in. And the first error has been charged to center fielder Bobby Tolan, which allowed Brooks Robinson and Frank the extra base. Well, there's a break in the action here at Memorial Stadium with a score, Baltimore 3 and Cincinnati 2. The Reds bring in their hard-throwing young left-hander Don Gullett to pitch to Ellie Hendricks. Hendricks bounces one through. Frank Robinson scores. Now Brooks goes for the plate, but a good throw by Pete Rose cuts him down. Beautiful strike from Pete Rose. The two down, they wave Brooks Robinson on in. Here comes the throw. Right on the money. Johnny Bench putting the tag on Brooks. Well, Cincinnati facing Palmer. Top of the fourth, Tommy Helms. Watch Frank Robinson. One gone. Well, there's a little poem on the board. Our thanks to Kurt and Chuck, to Lou and Chet. Mark and all of the crew. If we should uh, win, uh, we loudly cheer, and we'll be seeing you next year. But if we lose, though there be sorrow, we'll be NBCing you tomorrow. You didn't write that. Did I you? had nothing to do with it. Here's Dave Concepcion. He's been most impressive. Dave Johnson. The Powell for the second out. The new batter is pitcher Don Gullett. And Don will bat for himself here in this top of the fourth. Well, that's an unusual pitch from Palmer to pick up another strikeout as fifth. Last half of the fourth inning, Baltimore will bat Johnson, Belanger, and pitcher Jim Palmer against young Don Gullett. Interesting story on the success of the 1970 Orioles for you to look at right now. Right fielder Rose in pursuit, calling for it. And that'll be the first out in the last half of the fourth. Here is Mark Belanger. Fly to center field in the second inning. Watch Helm. Nifty stab by Tommy. And throw to first for the second out. Just put Robinson receiving all the notice for his defensive play, but this little Tommy Helms is quite a second baseman. And a hand building for Baltimore pitcher Jim Palmer. He started uh, the Baltimore uprising in the third with a bloop single to center field. Two strike pitch to Palmer. And Gullett takes care of the Orioles 1-2-3 order. And at the end of four innings of play, the score is Baltimore 4 and Cincinnati 2. And now down to Tony Kubek. With me down on the field, the uh, president of the National League, Mr. Chubb Feeney. Chubb, this isn't the National League uh, team we saw win that pennant over there. They're not hitting quite well. Uh, of course, they haven't been hitting the way they did during the season, but I think you can attribute that to the Orioles pitchers. I think they've played very well. These are two great ball clubs. It's no disgrace to be beaten by this fine club. And, of course, I imagine you've heard it many times before that the difference in the series so far has been a man named Mr. Robinson playing third base for the Orioles. Chubb Feeney, thank you so much. Let's go upstairs. Thank you, Chubb. All right, and uh, Tolan, the uh, first ball hitting, has popped out to shortstop Mark Belanger, one gone in the Cincinnati half of the fifth, and now Pete Rose. That was quite a throw. Rose made it up to the plate to cut down Brooks Robinson, who was trying to add Baltimore's fifth run in the third. Watch left fielder Buford. Wins got it. It is gone. Home run, Pete Rose. His first home run of the series. And the happy Cincinnati Wives, who in truth have had very little to cheer about. 
And Rose gives it a ride. His first homer of the series hitting the bullpen roof. Rose doesn't get many, but he runs them out, the fastest home run hitter in the game. The Oriole lead is trimmed to four to three. Ball one to Perez. Watch Paul Blair. And that's the second out. And now Johnny Bench. As the Reds battle back to make it another one run ball game. Baltimore four, Cincinnati three, two out, nobody on, and bench. Well, Buford coming on and Blanger back. It should be Buford, the left fielder. Final out of the inning, a run on a base hit, and so in the middle of the fifth inning, the score is Baltimore four and Cincinnati six. Winter Games Pass send a $5 contribution to Olympic House. Box CV, 57 Park Avenue, New York, New York, 116. Every contribution will directly aid your United States Olympic team, and in future years, this distinctive cloth emblem will be a real collector's item. Well, to the last half of the fifth inning, and Buford to lead off for Baltimore in a 4-3 ball game with the Orioles leading Cincinnati, and our pleasure to turn the microphone over to Kurt Gowdy. Thank you, Chuck Thompson. Don Buford has walked and grounded out. Now, ground ball to second. Helms backed up on it, but still makes the play. One down. Fan wire that Elmer Smith, the Cleveland pitcher, hit a grand slam home run in 1920 against Brooklyn. I Number saw it. Elmer Smith was a right Blair. fielder. <laughs> That's foul on deck. Well, we get the devil a lot of times, Chuck, and uh, deservedly so. But we can't take the blame for McNally. One ball, no strikes to Blair. Sacrificed and struck out. Four to three, Baltimore. Bounding ball cut off by Perez, the third baseman. Two away. Boog Powell has rounded out a walk. He scored a run. We got a wire here from a lady in Jacksonville Beach, Florida. Please convey congratulations to Boog Powell, who I babysat for when he was just an armful in Lakeland, Florida. I'll bet he was really an armful when he was a baby. I'm just going to say, Kurt, I can't imagine him as an armful. He's got to be more than that. Rookie man and a fastball. Second strikeout for young Don Gullett. He's now retired six in a row, and at the end of five innings, Baltimore four and Cincinnati. The batter, number 23, Lee Mayer. Rounder to short. Belanger from the hole throws him out. One down. Rookie Bernie Carbo has struck out, hit into a fourth play. Struck him out on a breaking play. Strike out number six for Jim Palmer. Tommy Helms is struck out. That's Woody Woodward uh, warming up, which means... Tommy Helms. They're getting down to the bottom of the order. They may be making some changes. Helms is struck out, flied out. Walked him on four pitches. A third walk for the Reds. Dave Concepcion drilled a triple to right field. They're not going to run in the second. Grounded out the second in the fourth. It's the curve and a line to Belanger at shortstop. No runs for Cincinnati. No hits. There were no errors. They left one. We've gone five and a half innings. The score, Baltimore four, Cincinnati three. Down to Tony. Thank you. You know if the uh, Cincinnati players believe like their wives, we're going back to Cincinnati, aren't we? We're right, Tony. I hope to bring it back to Cincinnati for the fans in Cincinnati because they are the greatest. Carolyn Rose, she must have been really thrilled when Pete hit his first World Series home run. I sure am, and I know that he is, and I know that the Cincinnati Reds want to win, and it's not over yet. It's a good bunch of guys. Thank you so much, Thank Mrs. You. Pete Rose. Back upstairs. 
Bullet struck out Robinson. Sunday in Cincinnati in the ninth inning. Hits a fly ball to left. Bernie Carbo picks it off and there's one down. Brooks Robinson, Homer, single. Driven in two runs. Two homers in the series. Leads the series now in RBIs. It's six. I think the best statement about Brooks Robinson's fielding was made by Sparky Anderson, the Cincinnati manager. He said, I'm afraid to drop my subject, in, uh, my sandwich in the clubhouse. Robinson will dart in and pick it up. The 2 1 delivery. That's the third hit in a row for Brooks Robinson. Now it's the sixth, and here's that man again. Baltimore's greatest discovery since crab cake, and don't those fans know it. Look at that standing ovation. In this game, Brooks has a homer and a single off Nolan. Now he makes it three for three against Gullet. Now let's see now, he has been up 15 times and had seven hits. Six RBIs. Ellie Hendricks. And a star for the Orioles in the series. Grounded out a single. He had a two-run double Sunday against young Milt Wilcox. In the right field, Robinson coming to third. The throw by Rose. He's in there, over the head, into the dugout. Third. Well, Hendricks. Hendricks has been jerking that ball to right field. He's a dead pull hitter usually. Well, we can take a look at the play again, and you talk about the good bounces. Baltimore got more than their share. That went right through there as if it had eyes. And now watch the bounce that Cincinnati's Pete Rose gets in his throw. It's off the mark a little bit but bounced right on by and into the Oriole dugout, and that allows Baltimore their fifth run. And the error is being charged on the throw. Sometimes, as they say, a ball has eyes, and this one by Hendricks squirts through the right side. The throw by Rose takes a high hop over the head of third baseman Tony Perez. Brooks Robinson is waved in. Hendricks takes third. The Orioles lead five to three. Rose charged with the error of the second. For Cincinnati in the game. Rose made only one error this season. It was in the first bad weather game at Riverfront Stadium. A base hit taking a high hop over Rose's glove. We're going to have a change of pitches. Clay Carroll will be coming on. There's a break in the action here at Memorial Stadium, Baltimore. The score now, Baltimore 5 and Cincinnati 3. And now a word from Major League Baseball. Baseball action films for your media where a catalog of baseball films, including World Series of 1970, What Makes an All-Star, highlights of the American and National League seasons, and other exciting shows, right on your organization letterhead to Major League Baseball Film Division, 685th Avenue, New York, New York. Woody Woodward has been inserted at shortstop. He's going to bat ninth. He's scheduled to lead off in the seventh. Clay Carroll will bat eighth in Dave Concepcion's spot. It's Johnson on the strikeout. Two down, the infield will back up. Mark Belanger up. A high fly to left fielder Bernie Carbo. Right in his back. One run for the Orioles in the sixth. Two hits. A costly Cincinnati error. One man left. We've gone six innings. Baltimore five and Cincinnati three. Angel Bravo 
is going to bat and play for Woody Woodward. Batting for Woodward, number 22, Angel Bravo. Reds will have to make all the moves now. We're in the seventh inning, they're trailing by two runs, they're three games down in the series. Bravo, Tolan, and Rose. Three left-handers in a row. Top of the seven. He pops it up. Dave Johnson. One down. Bobby Tolan, a single. Watt popped up. He scored a run. Number 28, Bobby Tolan. Strike to him. Dude. Reaching for a high one. Seven strikeouts to Palmer. Two years ago, Jim Palmer's future was in jeopardy. The youngest player who ever picked a shutout in a World Series, 20 years old in 1966. 67 and 68, came up with bad arm and back problems. They say, Chuck, that the Orioles spent nearly $30,000 just on medical bills trying to find the uh, problem. It was a difficult thing, and uh, some very fine medical uh, attention, plus a heel lift really solved the problem. Well, look at that slow one float over. Strike two. Now, Palmer said when he got the bad arm and came back, he decided they had to go to some other pitches, and there was an example of one that changed the pace. He got a fair ball. Rose is claiming a hit off his foot. Now they want the ball brought back again. Rose is arguing. They're giving it the shoe polish examination. Rose said it hit my foot. And he's unhappy. Home plate umpire Bob Stewart asked for the ball back. From the first base umpire, Bill Williams, remember in the series last year. And in Milwaukee, when he had some shoe polish on the ball. The Rose is out. Three up and three down. Barky Anderson is out arguing. And now Bob Stewart goes down to check with his umpire mate, Ken Burkhardt, at third. to the seventh, Pete Rose bounces one to first base and claims foul off his foot like you remember Nippy Jones and Cleon Jones, but Rose is ruled out. Daryl Chaney becomes the third shortstop of the game for the Reds. Jim Palmer leads off. Palmer is single, scored a run and struck out. Pop to the infield. Tommy Helms waiting for it. One down. Five to three, Baltimore ahead. Last of the seven. Don Buford has walked, rounded out twice. Number nine, Don Buford. Pulled him on a curve. Throw down a first. Strike out for the pitcher, an assist for the catcher, and a put out for the first baseman. Two down. Carroll's second strikeout. Blair has sacrificed, struck out, grounded out. Curve for strike three. Strong inning again for Clay Carroll. Three up and three down for the Orioles. We've gone seven innings to score. Baltimore five and Cincinnati three. The batter, number 24, Tony Perez. Red center power boys up in the eighth now. Jim Palmer's low with the first pitch to Perez. Ball one. Perez has struck out twice. Fly out. One and one to him. 
Now ball makes it one and two. Just a little bit high. Two and two. Last two years, he's won 21 out of 25 games. Ball three. Just a peek of it. Foul again. Foul back. Perez is on. That's the fourth walk given up by Palmer. Johnny Bench has gone hitless. Fouled out, pops up, wide out. Bamberger, the pitching coach, now is coming out to talk to Palmer. Five to three, Baltimore, eighth inning. Earl Weaver. There's a drive that is a base hit in the corner. Coming on to third is Perez. Bench holds is cut off alertly by Belanger. And now here's Earl Weaver coming out. When he comes out, it usually means the pitching change. After Perez walks, Bench puts the wood on the ball, and the machine has something going. That's all for Palmer, who's tiring. Weaver gives the ball to Eddie Watt. Gil Hodges, whose team beat the Orioles last year in the World Series, is downstairs with Tony. Gil, last year, of course, you were in the World Championship here in the World Series, and I'm thinking about the Cincinnati Ball Club. Uh, their power hitters have been kind of stymied so far. You were a power hitter. How can that be done so often? Well, Tony, I think, yeah, their credit has to be given to the Baltimore pitchers. I think they've been pitching them real good, and also I think the, the Perez and Benches have been swinging a little bad balls now and then. I think maybe they're pressing a little bit. Uh, we're talking to Earl Weaver, and he said that he didn't think that Palmer had his good stuff, and I don't think he was throwing very well today, but he does have a good curveball, and that curveball can be rough on those right-handed power hitters. Well, there's no question about it, and the, especially the type of uh, curveball that Palmer throws. It's off speed and considerably slower than his good fastball. Gail, you had a great performance in the Eastern Division of the National League this year. You battled down to the finish in spite of the fact that some of your pitchers had bad arms, and we congratulate you for a heck of a season. Thanks a million, Tony. Thank you, Gil Hodges. Back upstairs. 28-year-old Eddie Watt from Iowa led the Orioles in games pitched four years in a row. 53 games this year he's worked. Won seven and lost seven. An earned run average of 3.27. The Reds have runners on first and third. Nobody out in the eighth inning. Lee made the batter. There's a goal. Goodbye. The Reds are in the lead. that one. Those are the Cincinnati Wives. Lee May has now been on base three times in this game. He's the top player for Cincinnati in the series. There's a goal. Now Lee May with a tying runs aboard. And all he asks is what's with what? One pitch, one swish of the bat. And Lee May turns it around. Lee May, the free swinger. He goes for the first pitch he can reach, and if he hits it right, it's gone. For once, the big red machine has wiped out a Baltimore lead. Kurt Gowdy, Chuck Thompson, Tony Kubek back with you in Baltimore. Two strike ten. Struck him out on three pitches. One down. Tommy Helms has struck out, flying out on what? Ground ball. Getting by Brooks Robinson. Belanger feels it. Well, that's one they finally got by Robinson. <laughs> Maybe Cincinnati thinks things are changing, Chuck. Well, we talked about that a bit yesterday, that uh, the Reds desperately needed some kind of a break to to kind of, well, if you can use the expression, light the fire, and, uh, well, that big home run by May here in the eighth inning may have just done what Cincinnati needs to prolong this series. That scored a base hit for Tommy uh, Helms. Their third hit this inning. He 
is automatically out. A strikeout for the pitcher put out for the catcher. Two down. Darrell Chaney, a switch hitter, hitting 232 this year. Number 12, Darrell Chaney. Foul tip for strike three. But the Reds go ahead in the eighth inning with three runs, three hits. There were no errors. One man left. At the end of seven and a half, Cincinnati six, Baltimore five. Move foul, Frank Robinson and Brooks Robinson. Foul, as you can see, led the Orioles and homers this year. The Reds have stopped him now. He's not had a hit in his last six official trips to the plate. Where's the great stop? The throw, one and eight, and nine. Beautiful play by Tony Perez at third. And at the other end, Lee May again coming through for the Reds. Well, let's take a look again in the replay of this magnificent play from the fired up Tony Perez. Not only a good stop, but he got the throw away in time and going away from his target. And now watch what Lee May does with it, taking no chances off the bag to make the tag, tag of Powell. And he may have gotten jammed just a little bit uh, in the collision with Powell, but a dandy play by the Reds. Kurt? Frank Robinson hits the ball to shortstop Cheney. He's out, two down. Brooks Robinson, three for three, a homer, two singles, two RBIs, he has scored two runs. In the playoffs, three games against Minnesota and the World Series, he's hitting 519. 14 hits and 27 times up. 3 2 pick. Base hit, four for four for Robinson. The tying run is now on. And the batter is Ellie Hendricks. He's grounded out. Single to right. Single to right. Curve is beat down to Lee May. He'll make the play, and they're out of the inning. Ellie Hendricks grounding out to May. No runs, one hit, no errors. One left. We're going to the ninth inning with a score. Cincinnati six and Baltimore five. Well, we don't know what's going to happen in the ninth inning or tomorrow. If it goes tomorrow, we may be back in Cincinnati. If we are on Sunday for the seventh game, the World Series will start at 12.30 Eastern Daylight Time. And following the World Series, we'll have NFL football, Pittsburgh and Houston. If not, There'll be a lot of attractive games at NBC. Consult the paper for the listing of the game in your area for NFL football on Sunday. Ball one to Bobby Tolan, who has one hit in three times. Eddie Watts, the pitcher, to another. Ball three. Tolan walks. The top base dealer in the majors is now on first. Here's Earl Weaver coming out. Bring him on, he says. 35-year-old Mo Drabowski on the mound. Pitch Sunday, two in the third inning. Gave up a home run to Johnny Bench. Slams it to center field. Blair is there, one down. Tony Perez. Number 24, Tony Perez. So far, has had a tough series at the plate. He's one out of 13. He walked in the eighth, came in to score on Lee May's three-run homer, and put the Reds ahead six to five. Reds holding that one-run lead in the top of the ninth. There goes the runner. Here's the throw. And he is out. Dave Johnson took the pass. I will take a look at the uh, leading base dealer, Tolan, and the fine throw from Elrod Hendricks. The Johnson tag. 
and the second out. The pitch was a ball to Perez. Two down, nobody on now for the Reds. The Orioles in their last of the ninth have Johnson, Belanger, and Grabowski scheduled up. Bottom of their order. A high fly to right center. Blair going for it. He's there. We're going to the last of the ninth inning with the score. Cincinnati six and Baltimore five. Dave Johnson. Grounded the pitcher, slide out, struck out. On deck is Terry Crowley. Ball one. Johnson hits a high fly down the left field line. Going for it is Cheney. He's got it, the shortstop, and foul ground. One away in the last of the ninth inning. Terry Crowley. Your attention, please. A young left-hander. For Belanger, number 37. Terry Crowley here. Appearing in his first World Series. Crowley, Rettman. Some of the talented kids. Grits that the Orioles have in their dugout that can't play because the Orioles just have too many good players in the field. The Orioles have a great young outfielder named Don Baylor in the minors. Rochester. Ball one that stays a real coming. Crowley hit 260. He's dangerous. Curve is hit down to Lee May. It's a fair ball. Two down. And the Reds now are one out away of moving this series along to tomorrow. Now another pinch hitter coming up. Merv Rettman. There's a kid that's in the bench and led the Orioles in hitting. Bounding ball to Perez. The throw wide out the first base. Ball dropped by Lee May. The ball fell out of May's glove on the impact. And Rettman is on, and the Orioles have the tying run at first. Let's watch it now. Perez coming up. Makes a wide throw again. May has to leave the bag for the swipe tag. And as he tags Rettman, the impact. Guard the ball loose as you see the ball rolling to the right. Rettman is on. The tying run. An error charge on Perez for his wide throw. Earlier in the eighth inning, he made a wide throw, and May made a great save of it in the tag. Don Buford, the batter. Three and one. Anderson right now. Three and two. Two down. Rettman will be going on the pitch. An extra base hit might score him. Wayne Granger continuing the throw in the Cincinnati bullpen. Three two pitch coming up. There goes the runner. Struck him out. The ball game is over. And the Reds have won their first game of the 1970 series. A tremendous relief job by Clay Carroll, who worked three and two-thirds innings, a one-hit shutout ball. And he has now pitched eight and a third innings in this World Series and has not given up a run. The bullpen has failed Cincinnati on other occasions, but Carroll has not let them down. And the big blow is Lee May's three-run homer in the top of the eighth inning. The final score, the Reds, six runs, eight hits, and three errors. Baltimore, five runs, eight hits, and no errors. Now it's up to Clay Carroll, who protects that lead into the ninth. Two out, three and two, and the pinch hitter, Marv Rettman. This should do it. The umpire's initial call ends the game. But the ball squirted loose. An error charged on the throw, and Baltimore is still alive. Series games have been lost on less than that, but Carroll won't let it happen. The batter is Don Buford. Carroll reaches back for something extra, and it's all over. Cincinnati breaks the spell. They win 6-5 to five and trail three games to one. <laughs>